All right, hello everybody, this is Nick from the ArcadeHunters.com, bringing you another arcade home port review on the 3DS XL from Nintendo. Fortunately, this is not the new one, the new one doesn't come out until February, hopefully I'll uh, get my hands on one to take a uh, look at some of the new upgrades that they're making on it. So, this Thursday, or this past Thursday as you're seeing the video, Sega finally announced that they're going to be releasing the next batch of 3D Classics, and the first one that came out... Right there, Afterburner 2, 3D Afterburner 2. Um, just so you know, I have my, um, I'm playing in the dark, so I have a better, uh, I don't have glare on anything. I have my 3DS plugged into a pair of, uh, external computer head, uh, computer speakers, so it sounds a little bit louder. It's actually going to sound a lot louder. So, let's get into the game. We're going to show off what, uh, Sega and M M2 are doing. Um, also in the collection, they're going to be bringing over OutRun, one of my most personal favorite games, Thunderblade, and the two Fantasy Zone games are going to be coming over, and they're going to be fully redone in 3D. Very, very nice. So let's get into the settings, because there was a couple, there was some confusion with uh, some of the other uh, videos that we did of some of the uh, previous 3D classics. So... Right here, we have the number of lives and the difficulty. Uh, there is a secret option that you can unlock, but uh, since we have not beaten the game, we don't get options to that. So with the input settings, right now I'll say with the controls, I'm not a big fan of uh, what they did. The circle pad, the regular circle pad is really, really fast while the D-pad's really slow. I'm probably going to have to go into the control settings and going in and adjusting them. And you can see on the bottom it says Circle Pad Pro. Yes, it does support the Circle Pad Pro. I don't have mine plugged in on my 3DS XL at the moment, but it will work the throttle. If uh, When you get the new 3DS XL, the C-Stick will work the throttle. If not, it'll just use the L and R shoulder buttons. So, here's where the confusion comes in with the screen size. Some people were wondering, do I have to play it with the borders, or can I play it full screen? Yes, you can play it full screen, but since uh, we're the arcade hunters, we're going to be doing a video showing you pretty much how they replicate the arcade experience. And right here, it says, moving heads-up display. So, the first two the, on the right really don't move. They do have uh, animated lights in it, and those are the two upright styles. Upright style 1 is the American version, and upright style 2 is the Japanese. Now, if we go to the left, and the one that's highlighted, the one that I'm going to be playing in the video, is called the Double Cradle, and that is the full-size motion deluxe model that you've seen at Fun Spot when I've taken videos of it, and that's also the one that they have in the preview picture of the game when you boot it up. And finally, the commander type, I'm going to splice a photo of it in now. That's pretty much one of the Japanese models. I didn't really get to see many of those. I'm pretty sure I played a version of G-Lock on that as a kid. So let's get to start the game now. When I, It's a good thing that I have the, my uh, external computer speakers, so... Because you're going to be hearing something that these guys did that pretty much made, like, uh, my day when I see how faithful that these guys are being. So, I'm going to hit start, and I'll take a listen. Alright, that was not my oil burner downstairs in the basement. No, that was an actual afterburner machine that they recorded. Now I'm going to splice in two photos right here. This first one are the two producers from Sega. I'm not sure of their names. I'm probably going to butcher them anyway, being in Japanese. And here's the second photo that I saw was really cool. This is actually them in the cockpit of the full-size deluxe version, and the girl is recording it. So that's what, I guess if you open up the coin door, this is what the game sounds like when it's idling. So let's shut up. Let's play some afterburner too. Press the X button. And they also went ahead and they they did the um, the sound effects of the um, that's good. Now I did the sound effects, so the L and R's will do the um, the throttle. So wow, and it's not going to do it for me. That's awesome. <laughs> but trust me, they're there. You can hear though. Though that's the. Um, now it says, your mission is to rescue Lucy from Match's hand. I have never seen that before in an Afterburner, so that must be the Japanese version. I didn't even know there was a store to Afterburner. So here's right where I'm saying the, um, this is on the circle pad, is very, very fast. Now if I use the D-pad, it's a lot slower. And you can't really do uh, barrel rolls on this, it's kind of, kind of sucks, so... Yeah, the first waves are really easy. You don't really need to use the, uh... I can see 
that's not me with the, um, with my bad camera work. That's actually the, um, them replicating the, the way the chair moves and when the, um, see when I get shot down right now, watch, they'll jiggle back and forth. That's what it really does on the arcade model, so let me turn it down just a little bit so you can hear me. Nothing but excellence from these guys at M2. See, now on, now he can really do a barrel, which you need to do. Oh, I got me again. Yeah, figures after I crash, now they're gonna reload my, uh, gonna reload my weapons. See, I've never seen that. Matches approaching equip enough missile. So it's gotta be the Japanese version. Pretty much because a lot of these older Sega arcade games are just a bear to work on. Yes, Jumble Junkie about his uh, Space Harrier. It's, it makes a story in a flight sim game. So yeah, we're going to continue. Pretty much just because I want to hear the Afterburner song. I was playing uh, Bayonetta 1 uh, this afternoon, and of course they play the... Uh, the song in the first Bayonetta when you're on the motorcycle. But I mean, they could have just, you know, put it on, you know, put a playable ROM, like pretty much everybody does nowadays, but the fact that they went out and they found all the different cabinets and recorded the different sounds, that's just amazing, I think. Kudos to them, and I, can't, I cannot wait for when Afterburner, when Outrun comes out. Uh, the song that everybody loves. Oh. It's never really good at this game, even though I love it. Oh, it does have limited credits. Very nice. and we're going to see the first of the uh, Sega throwbacks with a uh, cameo. Here he comes right there on the bottom. There he goes. There's the guy from uh, from Hang On. The Ferrari and the, the guy and the girl make an appearance later on in the game from, uh, from OutRun. Oh. Make it into stage six. That's when you have to use the uh, the throttle because they start coming up from behind you. They do not want you on this game anymore. I'm gonna hit no. Now let me turn it down so you can hear me. So all of the extra environmental sound effects, those you can turn off. You uh, completely have all the option to put those on or off if you want, if you don't want them. If you just want to play it like a regular standard home port, you don't want to use the um, the moving uh, screen that's going back and forth, especially I know a lot of people like me, uh, I, as I got older, I can't really take a lot of the portable games uh, if I'm driving in a car and stuff like that, if I'm a passenger in a car, if I'm like on a bus or even going on the uh, LIRR and it just hurts my head. So very cool stuff from Sega and M2. I'm going to be uh, definitely checking out um, OutRun and Fantasy Zone and Thunderblade when they come out. So Check it out if you have a Nintendo 3DS over on the eShop. Uh, you'll be glad you did. So, once again, I'm Nick from thearcadehunters.com. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll have more videos for you here soon. Thanks for watching.